Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode 374 of the All Dolphins podcast. It's the return of Behind Enemy Lines, and I'm jacked about this one because it gives me the chance to reconnect with a good old buddy of mine, Ben Volan from the Boston Globe. How are you, Ben Volan from the Boston Globe? Alan, 374 episodes. That's pretty impressive, man. About that, huh? Yeah, um, bad. Year and a half we started this thing and still wow. going. That's a lot of episodes in a year and a half, man. Way to go. Uh, we go almost every day, and I've managed to piss off quite a few people, but not enough that I've stopped to, have, to, get, to keep that's, going. That's what we do, right? That's the nature mm-hmm. of the business. Yep, and I'm sure we're going to piss off some more people today as we speak about this <laughs> clash of the Titans. Okay, maybe not the Titans. That was, that was Monday night. Yeah. About this great matchup Sunday at Gillette Stadium between the Dolphins and your Ben Volan New England Patriots. Uh, different take for you after covering – championship contenders year after year after year under Bill Belichick to now covering a team that's going to be in contention for the number one overall pick. Yeah, it's it's rock bottom for the Patriots right now. And, you know, I I guess it could be worse. I guess they could be 0-4, but they they did su- get a surprise win against the Bengals in week one, week one where the end of the season, the Bengals are really going to be kicking themselves for that. that that's a loss, a conference loss that's really going to cost them either a playoff spot or playoff seeding. But so, you know, the Patriots, maybe that week one win, maybe set expectations a little high because since then it's been pretty disastrous. Uh, Three straight losses. The last two have been blowouts. You know, they've got nothing on offense. Jacoby Brissett has no one to throw to. Uh, Brissett himself is not the most dynamic quarterback. The offensive line is in tatters right now, and this team is, is just a mess. You've got receivers throwing up their hands in frustration at the quarterback. You've got defensive players calling each other out for being selfish and going playing outside the scheme. So it's only four weeks in, and we've already seen some signs of dysfunction from the Patriots. Um, yeah, I think everyone knew it was going to be this bad going into the season, so this isn't a surprise. And I'm trying to um, not, you know, hammer the Patriots too hard. That really, the goal of this season is to see how they can improve throughout the year. I, I don't think anyone expected them to have a good one loss record. It's just, are they, you know, um, you know, excelling in December, playing their best football when, when it matters the most, are they building towards something, you know, developing a few players. And I'll tell you what, the the first September, they couldn't have set their baseline any lower. The the team is just a mess right now. So they have nowhere to go, but up. Um, But yeah, definitely, um, you know, a team that was on top for so long is now at the bottom of the NFL. Yeah, you said something that kind of struck me here when you're talking about this year, what it's about for them. And in light of that, why wouldn't you go ahead and play Drake May, the third overall pick from North Carolina, um, get him game experience. They're not going anywhere anyway, so why not getting him in there? It's a great question, and I think it comes down to two things. I, I think they don't think he's ready yet, and I think they don't think the team around him is ready. If Drake goes out there, he's going to get killed. I mean, he's Jacoby Brissett is taking a beating, and he's really taking one for the team right now. And I think he's probably sitting there at night, and he's making between six and a half and eight million dollars this year, which is hey, it's a great living. But I think for the 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 beating he's taking, he's probably sitting there thinking, I'm not getting paid enough for this right now. Um, and it was interesting two two weeks ago, the Patriots played the Jets on a Thursday night. And they put Drake in there for his NFL debut in garbage time. And he played 16 plays, had a couple of nice throws. He, he There was a fourth down play where he stepped up in the pocket and delivered a nice ball over the middle. But he also kind of looked like a chicken with his head cut off, the, you know, just kind of running around, didn't look fully aware. Took a couple of hits that were like, you know, big hits that he didn't really see coming. And so I, my, my uh, belief is that, the Patriots saw that appearance from Drake and decided and figured he's not quite ready yet because they had garbage time against the 49ers this past week. Oh, right. They didn't put Drake in there. We're all kind of wondering why, you know, why did you do it this? And they didn't really explain themselves. So I think that they they feel that Drake is not ready yet. Plus, the team is such a disaster. He's going to get hurt. He, you know, he's going to get hit and get beat up. And to me, if you're the Patriots, the only thing that matters this year is keeping Drake May healthy. You want him making, you know, surviving the whole season and having a healthy off season. So he's ready to go into to year two and ready to take charge instead of rehabbing this off season. So, you know, to me, if you can hold Drake may out until maybe the last four or five games, that would be ideal. Let him get some experience, but don't subject him to the pain that Jacoby Brissett is experiencing. But 
Brissett's taking so many hits that it's to me it's only a matter of time before he gets hurt and Drake is going to be in there. So that's that's where the or, Patriots stand right now, and it's you know not not an ideal situation. Or hear me out on this: if the offensive line is bad and you need a mobile quarterback back there, which Drake May is to a certain degree, but Joe Milton's very very mobile. And he's be so much fun to watch just because of that bazooka arm of his. How about Joe Milton instead of Jacoby Brissett? Well, they're not going to leapfrog Drake May with Joe Milton. So a man can, you know, that, man can ask. It's a really interesting dynamic with the Patriots this year because so you have a coaching staff on the offense. It's entirely new. It's all these guys from Cleveland. Alex Van Pelt, who was the offensive coordinator there, he, he's now the coordinator here. The quarterbacks coach, the offensive line coach, it's a bunch of Cleveland guys, and that's why they signed Jacoby Brissett. He played for them in 2022 when Deshaun Watson was suspended. They really grew to like Brissett, and so they figured he'd come in and be their guy. So Jacoby's their guy. They really like him. They want him, him to be the quarterback, but they're being stretched in multiple ways now because they're also responsible for developing Drake May and, and getting Drake May ready. And they're doing this split in practice where Jacoby Brissett gets 70% of the team reps with the first team, but Drake May is getting 30%. And so you wonder, you know, is, is that hurting the team when Jacoby Brissett is not getting every snap in practice? Is that contributing to, to some of the dysfunction there? And so the coaches, just their loyalties are being stretched in, in multiple directions. And it's like, you know, this is a team where the tight ends and running backs are probably the best part of, of their offense. So that's who you want to try to throw to. But the receivers are – we want to get the receivers going, so we got to try to feed this guy the ball and this guy the ball. And just, the offensive coaches are, are really just being pulled in, in 17 different directions right now. So um, Gerard Mayo has got a, you know, a real tricky responsibility to keep the team together. And, and already with some bickering and some receivers throwing their hands up, we're, we're seeing signs that, that all is not well with the Patriots. This might not be fair, but – Early on, what's your take on Gerard Mayo and his future as a head coach? Yeah, it's it's early. So, like I said, with the Patriots, like you want to see how they do as the season wears on. I, you know, I want to let Gerard go through a November and December before judging him. You know, that said, it hasn't been a great start. Week one was awesome. They were feeling their oats. They were pounding their chest after week one. But reality has set in. And, uh, you know, a lot of it is just talent. They, they just don't have much talent on the team. Bill Belichick left them a pretty, pretty barren roster, especially on offense. And, you know, they got Drake with the number three pick. They got Jalen Polk, a wide receiver in the second round. We'll, we'll see if those guys pan out. But otherwise, it, it's still a very, you know, they, they still are lacking talent when compared to, to other NFL teams. So it's not all Mayo's fault, but okay. haven't been overly impressed with the game management, which is such a big part of which is why the head coaches make as much money as they do. Um, the guy loves punting on fourth and short, which is very disappointing. This is a team that's going nowhere. Your underdogs, like take some risks, set, set the standard like Dan Campbell did in, in Detroit. Instead, they had this really bad series. It was the first series of the game last week against the Niners. 0-0, they're driving. They get third and three on the Niners' 41-yard line. So they're in plus territory, third and three. And they throw incomplete and then punt. And it's like, what, what are we doing here? Like, should it just run the ball twice? Or you got to kind of go for that on fourth and three, show some confidence in your guys. Instead, he's coaching a little scared. And uh, I think the team plays that way. So um, not off to a great start for Gerard Mayo. He also, I like the fact that he's transparent. You know, David Andrews, the center, is going to have surgery on his shoulder. He came out today and just told us that. So I, I well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Ben. Hold on, because I saw that clip. He also said, "Since it's already out there, that's true." There were, there were, but it, I mean, it'd been, but even with Bill, when with Bill Belichick, he would have played dumb. You know, he would have said, "You'll see the injury report," and they would have waited until Saturday to put him on injured reserve, and they wouldn't have said anything all week. So at least, you know, the the report had only been out for like an hour. Um, okay. So Mayo, I, I give him credit. They're trans. They're much more. They don't make a murder mystery out of every little thing. It's, so I, I I appreciate that. But, you know, his talking's gotten him in trouble a few times. He's had to stick his foot in his mouth uh, more than a few times since taking over the job. You know, it started right away. He goes on the radio. And he's like, yeah, we got all this cash to burn. Don't you guys worry. And then they didn't do a thing in free agency for the most part. Um, and, the, you know, the way they handled the quarterback um, in, uh, in training camp, one day Jacoby's the starter. And then the next day, well, Drake May is really making a push. And Drake is probably – 
played better. And it's like, we, can we just get a straight answer out of these guys? They were just going in circles and um, talking up Drake May while also trying to tell us that Jacoby Brissett was their guy. So, you know, he's learning. He's new on the job. I, I don't want to come down to, like, God forbid someone judge me closely on my first few months on a job. Um, but the clock management and, and stuff like that, the game management, you're a head coach. You, you know, you shouldn't be learning that stuff on the job. So I, I think uh, Mayo has has some some ways to learn there. That's fair. And you mentioned he's better than Bill Belichick. That's a low, in terms of the media dealings, that's a low bar right there. So, I mean, it doesn't take much to clear it. Uh, it's interesting you mentioned having money to burn, and it brought a thought in my head that – the Patriots also had that. And to me, that almost seemed like the beginning of the end for Belichick in New England. They had a lot of money, I don't know, three, four off seasons ago, and they went crazy in free agency, but they signed a bunch of mediocre players. And they also signed two tight ends that year, Hunter Henry, and now the Dolphins own John U. Smith. And kind of what happened now with John U. Smith is what happened with him in New England, correct me if I'm wrong, that – there were expectations because he's this athletic tight end and through four games in Miami, he has done very, very little. And he also, correct me if I'm wrong, was rather disappointing in terms of production with the Patriots, correct? Yeah, it's very surprising. He's a ridiculous athlete and he's so good run after the catch. Uh, and he had some plays when he was with Tennessee that were just mind blowing for a tight end. And you said it in New England, he just never clicked. They couldn't find they couldn't find a role for him or he just couldn't learn the offense or whatever the issue was. It was really disappointing. Hunter Henry, who they signed has ended up being a pretty good player for them. But yeah, that, that 2021 spending spree has definitely kind of spooked the Patriots. They will pick their spots, you know, now in free agency, but they do not want to have to be big spenders. And the only reason they did that was because they failed at the draft for so many years and, and the roster was just falling into decay. They had to go out and buy all these free agents like Hunter Henry and Kendrick Bourne and Matthew Judon. So it, yeah, you, when you're a team, you never want to have to be in that spot where you have to re replenish your team through free agency. So the Patriots want to try to focus on drafting and developing, but yeah, it, it is, you know, John New Smith had a decent year in Atlanta last year. So, so you would think that um, Mike McDaniel would find a way, especially in an offense that emphasizes so much catch and run. Maybe, you know, the Tua injury has, has, hurt Johnny Smith as well. Maybe if Tua were in there and the Dolphins offense were clicking on all cylinders that Johnny Smith would, would be making a bigger impact. But um, yeah, he, he, for two years, he was a big dud in New England and uh, you know, I, but he's such a sick athlete that I, I'm surprised that he's not fitting in better in Miami. No, no, it's, it is very surprising because all we, and this, it was a lot of it was me generated, but it was like, well, he can bring a new dimension. Finally, the Dolphins are going to have, some impact from the tight end position after having exactly zero touchdowns from the position last year. And we still had zero touchdowns four games in. And it's like Monday night against the, the Titans, one target, zero catches for John o. Smith and, and Durham Smythe and Julian Hill combined. Crazy. Keeping up with our former Dolphin players, Devon Gottschow, tell me how he's playing, how he's been with the Patriots since he got there. Yeah. He's a guy that uh, Belichick really liked. Like he got a, uh, they signed him in 2021 and then after one year they redid his contract and gave him a pay raise and people were like why because you look at his stats and you know it's not like he puts up numbers but Belichick always really liked him as kind of the you know the guy in the middle that linchpin of the defense and now that the Patriots are without Christian Barmore all season their young defensive tackle who uh, discovered that, uh, had a blood clot in preseason so he's probably out for the year so Godshaw has really taken on an important role as the only veteran in the middle of the defense. The Patriots also got rid of Lawrence Guy from last year. So uh, they're down some veterans in the middle, and Godshaw has been playing better. He's not a you know big pass rush guy. He's really just a first and second round guy, a second down guy, emerging as a more of a leader on the defense, uh, a, a voice of leadership. He came on the radio. He went on WEEI this week and called out some guys for being selfish, um, for kind of playing outside the scheme. And Gerard Mayo was asked about it today. He's like, I agree. That's that's what I said. That's what I told them. And so I, I don't mind Devon Gottschalk saying it because that's what I told them. And I think the issue is the last two weeks with Aaron Rodgers and Brock Purdy, those guys have been able to get outside the pocket and make all kinds of plays. Um, the Patriots had two sacks of Brock Purdy last week, and one of them – came after like 9.8 seconds. He was just running around, running around, running around. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, he and Rodgers were able to buy so much time outside the pocket and just convert all these third downs. And I think the Patriots players are getting upset with some of the teammates for uh, improvising and, and uh, allowing those guys to escape the pocket. So Godshaw has taken a leadership role, not afraid to call some guys out, not by name, but being more of a leader. Yeah, being more of a leader. And uh, But, you know, the Patriots defense is struggling. The run defense has been okay, but the pass defense – is like 28th right now. Geno Smith, Aaron Rodgers, Brock Purdy have all kind of shredded them. So I guess if Tyler Huntley is going to have a good game, th- this week might be it for him. Snoop, he might have a good game, especially if if there's no discipline in the pass rushing. Tyler Huntley is one of those guys who absolutely can get outside and, and get yeah. some yardage with his legs. Um, I'm a little surprised about the pass defense, although you mentioned the three guys that they played the last three games, and they started with Joe Burrow, so they faced four pretty good quarterbacks. Um, See, I would have thought looking at their roster that the secondary might actually be an area of strength as Christian Gonzalez like was impressive last year. Um, Jones on the other side is not a bad player. Kyle Duggar is a really good looking safety. And I forget who the other safety. Yeah, no, the secondary has been very solid. Um, Kyle Duggar missed practice today. That, that's one to watch. He, he left last week's game early. So that, that'd be a nice – and I think Jabril Peppers, their other safety. So they're a little banged up. No, the secondary has, has played well. And, and Drod Mayo, this goes back to the guys being selfish and letting the quarterbacks get outside the rush lanes. Um, he was saying, you know, we're struggling on third down. It's not because we're not covering. It's because we're letting the quarterbacks get outside and, and buy all this time. And, it's you know, as you know, it's hard to cover for six seconds or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, they've been getting picked apart. But I think it's really because they don't have much of a pass rush. Um, they, they, they need to scheme – pass rush, especially now that they don't have Matthew Judon. They don't really have an edge rusher. They, they have this kid, Keon White, a second player, second year player from Georgia Tech, who's been great. I think he has four and a half sacks. They came in the first two games. He's been a very disruptive player, but he's more of a big, physical, overpowering defensive end, a guy who can slide inside on pass rushing downs. He's not like a quick, you know, get off the ball kind of a pass rusher. Uh, he, he kind of wins by overpowering. So the, the Patriots really don't have anyone who's really going to get to the quarterback consistently. And I think that's why they're struggling in their pass rush so much. Got it. Uh, and, and with you, Don, who you mentioned, was it a case of he's purely contract related? He's not going to be here long anyway. Might as well get something for him. I, yeah, that had to be it. Um, he was going to be a distraction all year. He, he, you know, he was doing a pretty good job of, so he, he like made his point. He made a stink one day in camp. He made his point that he wasn't happy with his contract. They kept him home for another day, but then he came back and he was a pretty good soldier. Like you didn't hear much from him, but he wasn't, he was at least practicing. He was, he was being a, a, you know, he was behaving. And so maybe there was a chance that they could have made it work, but I think where they're at as an organization, they, they knew they needed the draft capital to get a third round pick. Not a bad haul. Um, That's probably what you're going to get for him as a compensatory pick when you lose him in free agency. But that that's a, that's in 2026. So at least you got a third round pick a year ahead of time for, for Judon. And e- even though um, he was being a good soldier, his contract was always going to be an issue for whatever reason they decided they drew a hard line in the sand and they weren't going to give him a pay raise. They, they gave new contracts to everyone, everyone in that locker room. It's all guys, you know, Ramondre Stevenson, Hunter Henry, Christian Barmore, Jelani Tavai, Jabril Peppers. There were like 10 guys who were on last year's team that they brought back with new contracts. And the one guy they wouldn't do it for was Matthew Judon. So I understand why he was upset. I don't know why they drew such a hard line. It couldn't have been that hard to give him a few extra million dollars and he would have been a good piece for the defense this year. But I think for, you know, they decided he's 32 years old. He's someone who breaks down and they got a third round pick from him from the Falcons. So um, I, I think that's, that was the thinking there. Um. Teams can turn it around in a hurry in the NFL these days, but are the Patriots as so talent deficient as it appears from the outside that it may be a couple of years before they can be competitive again? Yeah. I don't even think next year they'll be, you know, next year maybe they can creep up to 500 if they have a really good off season. Um, they had three glaring holes the, entering this season and they're pretty much the three biggest ones you can have it's franchise quarterback, number one receiver, and starting left tackle. They drafted Drake May, so we'll see if, if he's the answer. You know, they drafted this kid, Jalen Polk, in the second round. I don't think it's fair to expect him to be 
a normal one receiver right away. And they definitely don't have a left tackle of the future. So next year they got to get Drake a receiver, whether it's going out and getting one in free agency or what I would do, take a top five pick, get Justin Hunter from Colorado, get a stud from college and pair him up with Drake may and see if you can find a left tackle in free agency, more of a veteran there, but they've got to, they've got to figure out those two positions. And then I think realistically, if, if you're, you know, the plan for, for the Patriots, you got to look at the Detroit Lions. I think that's realistic. They were dreadful their first year. And then the first half of their second year under Dan Campbell, I think they started four and 19 under Dan Campbell. Mm -hmm. And then they went on that run their second year. They finished nine and eight. They missed the playoffs, but they had that big win against the Packers in week 18. You could feel the momentum they were building. And then year three, after three solid drafts and, and you know, free agency periods and building that team, the Lions took off last year and became a, an elite team. So I think the best case scenario for the Patriots is in 2026, they'll be ready to go. But they're still at least one more draft, if not two, away from really being able to compete. I, I don't need to tell you that Dolphin fans take great joy in watching the Patriots suffer like this. Uh, and then it'll be the Buffalo Bills next when their run is over. Who knows when, who knows when that'll be. I got two quick other ones for you. Uh, since, again, we like to keep up on our former Dolphin players here. Sum up for me the Mike Gesicki and Devontae Parker eras in New England. Yeah, Gesicki was just here for one year. Um, he caught a few balls last year. There was nothing that memorable that he did, to be honest. He was a he was a, a good guy in the locker room. Um, you know the type of player. He is not much of a blocker, really more of just um, a gadgety kind of receiver. Uh, you know, the Patriots had such quarterback problems again last year with Mac Jones really struggling. You know, Bailey Zappi, actually, the way that Zappi played at the end of last year, he's played a lot better than Brissett is now. You wonder if the Patriots got rid of their best quarterback when they cut Zappi at the end of training camp. I, I thought he got kind of a raw deal, but yeah. that, that's that's another thing for another time. So, you know, Gesicki was a nice one-year ad, but he's a much better piece for a team like the Bengals that has dreams of competing and actually making the playoffs as opposed to the Patriots. Uh, and then Devontae Parker just – couldn't stay on the field as, as you guys are, you know, you know, all too well. Uh, he made his first year here. He made some big plays. Yeah. I, I liked him. He, you know, in I think it's 2022, he made several big plays down the field and was a good jump ball receiver. But last year just had some injuries and couldn't get on the field. And uh, you know, so this year they, they just moved on from Devonte Parker. So it, it, that was another move. I, I think Matt Patricia, for whatever reason, really liked Devonte Parker and, if you're connected with Matt Patricia now, that's not uh, – the fans have really turned on him for, for some reason. So, um, yeah. you know, Parker was uh, – fan, fans are always got on him because the Patriots kind of propped him up as the answer, and he definitely wasn't going to be the answer. But, uh, yeah, you but know, so the, basically that that was – you wouldn't be surprised to hear that that's how his tenure went in, my, in New England. Yeah, no, that, that was that was his, his story right there. Uh, and I don't know if you saw – before I, I get to my final question, the Mike Gesicki sad line for his game on Sunday, one catch minus nine yards. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah. He, he had a decent – he had a couple of decent games early for the Bengals. But he did. Yeah, he did. I, I missed the minus nine-yard catch, but that's not a stat line you want. No, and I, I was I was trying to see where, where could I find the record for the most yards lost on the reception, and I, I don't even know where to look. So last thing for you, Ben Volan. Um What's your sense? I don't know if you make official predictions for the Boston Globe. What's your sense on the game Sunday? Is this a game you think that the Patriots actually could win? I do think they could win this game. I think this is actually a must-win game for the Patriots. Considering where they're at coming off a, a three-game slide, you're, the Patriots are facing the one team whose offense is worse than theirs. Patriots are 31st in scoring. Dolphins are 32nd. The Dolphins are a bigger mess right now than the Patriots are. You know, what they did at backup quarterback is criminal this year to not improve that backup quarterback situation. And it's so bad that they're already starting, you know, some guy that wasn't even with them in training camp. They've already benched Skylar Thompson. So that no, he's hurt. Uh, he's hurt. He's hurt, Ben. Oh, he's hurt. excuse me. He's hurt. But uh, I still think what they not having a stronger backup quarterback was a huge, huge mistake by the Dolphins front office. But, yeah, they're a mess right now. And if you're the Patriots, if you let that team come into Foxborough and beat you, I mean, you might never win a game again this season. This might be the only other time the Patriots are going to be favored. I think they're favored by one or two points right now. To me, this is a must win for Gerard Mayo and crew. I think they'll pull it off. I think it's going to be very ugly. 
can I predict like five to three? Like it's going to be so bad. It's going to set football back 40 years. It's going to be a nice day. Go outside, DVR the game, like, you know, maybe, you know, watch it later, power through some commercials. It's going to be really ugly. And I do think the Patriots will pull it off, but it might be their last win of the season. They're not going to win many games. That's not a really good statement on the Dolphins. You know, saying that, that just the fact, the mere fact that the Patriots are favored against them after the, the showing of the last three weeks. But this is where we are. Oh, man. Uh, ben, very much appreciated. Uh, delivered some strong stuff, as I knew you would. Catch his work at the Boston Globe. He's also on X at Ben Volen. Um, thanks, everyone, for watching. Please like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And we will catch you tomorrow. Thanks again, Ben. All right. Thank you, Alan.